How do you make accounting a more appealing career? How about fewer war stories and more success stories? This is the Issues Watch podcast. Hi, I'm Don Meyer, Chief Marketing Officer at the New Jersey Society of CPAs, and welcome to the Issues Watch podcast. Accountants leaving the profession, fewer people enrolling in college-level accounting programs, and competition from within and outside of the profession have made hiring in CPA firms challenging for years, long before the great resignation. So it's not surprising that firm owners, CFOs, and other leaders are asking what they can do about the talent gap. With me now to discuss how firms and companies are managing the war for talent is Daniel Hood, Editor-in-Chief of Accounting Today, a leading information source for public accountants. Welcome, Dan. Thank you, Don. It's good to be here. Well, we know that the ability to attract and retain accounting talent is a top concern for accounting firms of all sizes. Is the biggest need at the entry level, middle management, or across the board? Uh, you have to say across the board, I think. Uh, part of the thing, the issue is that the the factors that have led to the shortages go back a long time, right? Some of them go back to the 90s, right? Changes in the structure of the workforce, uh, changes in the in the the um, uh, the path to becoming a CPA, these things have sort of been in place for so long that they've reached a point where they affect every level. They affect entry-level people, obviously, but they also affect people who've been in the profession for 20 years than their career choices. So I think you'll find that, that pretty much at every level, people are looking for staff. It's just they're just not around. They're just not there to be found. Yeah, I remember uh, years ago, middle management was a big concern right. because I'm going back like 20 years. I'm dating myself. Um, there weren't a lot of accounting graduates, say, in the late 90s, early 2000s. Yep. So uh, flash forward to, say, like 2012, 2013, those people that would have had like 10 or 12 years of yeah, experience yeah. didn't exist. So middle management was a was a big problem back then. But yeah. now it just seems like it's, it's everywhere, especially at the entry level, because we know accounting graduations are down and fewer people are sent right. for the exam. Yeah, yeah, it's strange. I mean, you go back. I, I'll, I, I'm not going to date myself, but I could if I wanted to. <laughs> At any any given period over the last 25 years, you go back, and you could find periods where there'd be like is it 10 to 12 years of experience. Or I remember recently there was a relatively recently within the last decade there was a period where saying we really need those three to five year people. Where are we going to find them? Where are we going to find them? Right. But now it's everywhere. They're just they're just not around. So every cohort uh, is is just too small. Not enough people are entering the profession to start. You know, going to college, becoming taking accounting courses, accounting. Uh, 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 degrees, and then not enough of those people are going on to become CPAs. So, and it's really impacting every level of uh, of, of experience, right up to you know, are there enough partners? And, and the short answer is there aren't. Right, exactly. Um, and I guess more so than perhaps twenty years ago, there, there's more competition for that uh, accounting talent. I mean, we've usually framed the war for accounting talent as a war between accounting firms, right. but is corporate finance attracting accounting graduates and experienced professionals more so than it has in the past? Well, it's certainly trying to. <laughs> you know, I think they they like to, but I, you talk to 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 people in tax departments or CFOs or chief accounting officers at corporations, and I think they're finding some of the same difficulties finding staff. Uh, they're doing a sort of similar shift uh, towards more of an advisory focus, more of a entrepreneurial and, and uh, strategic advisory focus within their companies, and so they're looking for more talent in the accounting space, and they're just finding it just as difficult to find because it goes back to again, not enough people taking accounting degrees, not enough people pursuing their CPA. The other thing, and you talk about um, uh, competition for staff, corporate accounting is certainly a, a competitor, but it's also a giant increase in finance over the last 25 years, the finance uh, sector, the economy, a huge increase, obviously, in technology. And both of those are areas that are both uh, uh, interested in the kinds of people and the kind of talent that would ordinarily be attracted to an accounting firm. Uh, and they're also uh, have willing to pay enormous sums of money, right? Much bigger than the average uh, entry-level accounting firm. So those are uh, all around. You're finding a lot more competition, not just within sort of what you might call in, uh, 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 industry accounting, right? Corporate accounting, but also in specific sectors like technology and finance. And it's just, it's becoming really difficult to get staff at every level. Yeah. And it feels like a throwback. Um, I started with the NJCPA uh, in 2005. And I remember being told by our CEO, Ralph Thomas and others, that uh, you know, I mentioned the late '90s and early 2000s. That was a tough time for accounting majors because so many people gravitated towards technology, and yeah. it was a you know it was a Wall Street boom. And it's almost like history is repeating itself. We're seeing that same thing again. And I can say that you know we have uh, one of the largest 
scholarship programs in the country. And when we look back at, at uh, scholarship recipients and say like five years ago and say, okay, where did they go? A surprising number of them have ended up in, in the finance sector working for, you know, a Goldman Sachs or JP Morgan Chase or something like that. So yeah, there's competition there as well. Yep. Yep. Now they're going to all going to end up at uh, private equity companies one way or another, yes. right? Whether they're, whether they're, they work for an accounting firm and get bought by a private equity company or actually just go there straight out of college. Yeah. It's, um, uh, it's, it's really astonishing, uh, when you look at, the sort of skill sets that go into accounting, how attractive they are to so many industries. And we've talked about finance and tech, but it's true of a lot of other industries as well. That sort of analytical thinking, uh, the ability to think well within systems and to to think about systems intelligently, uh, even things like professional skepticism are hugely valuable sort of everywhere. So uh, it, it's just meaning that accounting firms need to really, accounting firms and corporate accountants as well, need to really up their game in terms of what they're doing to attract, to attract and retain staff. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we did an interview uh, with a uh, Fortune magazine writer a couple of weeks ago, another uh, Issues Watch podcast. And um, I asked her, are, are companies hiring more MBAs or CPAs? And she said they're hiring more MBAs. And she, she got into the reasons why, and it was some of the reasons you just mentioned, that MBAs are viewed as uh, more strategic, more analytical, and so forth. But part of it also, I, I wonder if they're just, it's harder to find CPAs these days because of the competition, of course, with accounting firms and, and you mentioned finance. Uh, so I wonder if it's not so much about the attributes of an MBA versus ZPA. It's just a supply and demand issue. Sure. I mean, think about it. If you're a, uh, there's so many factors that go into the, the talent shortage uh, and, and really two different levels, right? There's that whole level of just not enough people entering the profession as a whole, but then there's the subset of not enough of those people who do enter their profession getting their CPA uh, credential. And so for, the, for that section, for the people who aren't getting their CPA, some of that, not all of it, but some of it comes down to sort of a choice of, well, I can go to school for five years uh, or a little bit more and end up with an MBA, which is finished. That's a credential I can take with me anywhere. It's valued everywhere. Or I can go to school for five years and then have to pass a really complicated <laughs> exam. Um, uh, that will, for a large part of the the workforce, sort of limit me to you know accounting. They'll think of me as just an accountant, and I, I, we all know that's not true. Everyone who's listening to this podcast knows that's not what a CPA is about at all. Um, that they're, that they're they're as capable and and bring all the skills that you would hope to get from an MBA. But it's just there's that perception that the MBA is a lot. It's easier to get to a certain extent because you don't have that exam, um, but also it's immediately recognized sort of everywhere as a as a business passport. Right, exactly. And actually, uh, Kimberly Ellison Taylor wrote a great article for Accounting Today. Uh, I saw it yesterday about that idea of, of account the accounting profession sort of tackling the real problem. And that is, yes, there's issues with the extra 30 credits and there's issues with money and things, but it's it's kind of that value, that overall value of, right. of what accounting majors view as what they're going to get out of the profession. And I think that that's a real challenge, but it was a great article. I highly recommend that people uh, check that article on accounting today, because I thought I, that was such an interesting perspective, because yeah. there's so much, as she pointed out, employers are talking so much about the uh, education requirements and experience requirements and, and the difficulty of passing the exam, but that's not necessarily what the actual candidates are talking about. They're talking about other things, and that's what the, the article addressed. So I uh, definitely recommend people uh, look into that. Yeah, she, she's a great viewpoint on that, and it's absolutely worth seeing. They need to, students need to see the value. Um you know, it's one thing for us to sit here and say, oh, it's obvious. The value is clear. Right. Uh, but it's really got to be communicated. And that's one of the, the big answers to, to the problem. Yeah, I think brand is, is definitely a big issue for, yeah. for the accounting profession. And, um, you know, something just, just I think on a firm by firm basis and CPA by CPA basis, more has got to be done to just go to talk about accounting and CPAs just sort of in the right way and, and, yeah. and get away from talking about, um, you know, the miseries of, of busy season and the miseries <laughs> of this and clients and all that stuff. And you just got to talk about all the great work that CPAs right. do. Yeah, It's all they talk about. <laughs> You're it's, not wrong. Ah, man. It was so oh hard God. to take the exam. God. Oh, my tax season is the worst and audit yeah. season is the only thing worse than tax season is audit season. It's yeah. terrible. <laughs> you should totally not come into this profession. I mean, it's it's like they want to drive people away. Yeah, uh, no, it, yeah it's, a, it's like a badge of honor. Yeah. I mean, you understand the pride of having survived that and the, having done a hard job. Well, right? that's, you know, you, you, we totally got to acknowledge that, but it's, it's, it's not attracting people to the profession. Let's put it that way. Exactly. Exactly. And I think they do so much good. And I'm always like, just talk about the outcomes. Stop talking about the process and talk about the great stories you have. And, right. and I think that will attract more people, but uh, we're getting off topic a little bit. But, yes. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, that's me. Um, all right. So, 
in previous interviews we've conducted, um, accounting leaders have, have highlighted three potential steps to deal with the accounting shortage. So acquire new talent through mergers and acquisitions, yep. replace talent with technology and automation or outsource. Now we could do a whole separate podcast on mergers and acquisitions. So I'm going to focus on the, uh, the, second, the second and the third, the technology and then the outsourcing. So how successful have firms been in using technology to automate processes to make up for the talent gap? I would say they've been enormously successful in uh, using technology to automate processes. How much that's fixing the talent gap is another question in part. And I, you know, it, I, we're not going to talk about M&A, but one of the things with M&A is that in addition to bringing all on people, it also brings on more work. And that's, uh, this is the, the a problem that, that sort of we're thinking about is that there's an enormous amount of work, right? Firms are facing a huge amount of work for their clients. And I would say that they've been tremendously successful in, uh, automating a lot of that work, a huge amount of that work. Some of it's just software vendors are working 24-7 to find ways to automate accounting work for them. But firms have also taken this on themselves. They're making their own automations. They're finding their own ways to improve their processes. And some of that's very simple stuff. It's just workflow management. It's not necessarily even a software solution. It's just thinking better about their processes. Obviously, a huge part of it, though, it does involve bringing technology. I'd say they've been very successful. I don't know how often it's been that they've literally been just tying that saying, we don't have enough people to do this. Is there a technology solution for it? So much as saying, wow, we've got an enormous amount of work and not so many people. What can we all, you know, it's, it's, it's a less conscious, put it that way. It's a less intentional decision to automate in response to staff. It's more just, we've got to get through all this. Um, so yeah, I would say tremendous success. There's room for a lot more. Um, and the problem is, is it's just helping them keep up with, you know, they're just keeping their, their heads above water because the water keeps rising. Uh, they're just enormous. We, we, you know, you would have thought even in the pandemic that things might have slowed down a little bit, but instead it's just want more work. Uh, you know, you think well, the whole economy shut down, we're all staying at home. There won't be much to do, but instead accountants found themselves busier than ever uh, with all the sorts of things going on, helping people with, uh, you know, uh, all the uh, 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 relief programs, PPP and all that sort of stuff. There's just there's just too much work for them to do. So that I would say, you know, it's 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 hard sometimes to see the way in which the automation has helped because it's really just kept people up to speed. You know, up to, like I said, the water keeps rising and it's just helping you stay there as opposed to getting you above it, which I think is what people would hope for. Uh, and maybe we'll see that more in the future as as more technology comes into play. We see more from uh, AI and and soon enough, ChatGPT will be running everything for us, so we won't have to worry about it. Yeah, we're going to be doing a podcast with one of our members on, on ChatGPT in a couple of weeks. And um, since I, I brought it up uh, a couple of weeks ago as a possible topic, I, I think I see at least an article a day, maybe two, about ChatGPT and its its impact on this profession or that profession. So I, I think that's a fascinating topic. Um, there was a uh, another article um, on accounting today that I, I just read today about um, firms creating more leadership opportunities for non-CPAs. Um, are you starting to see more of that? Just the recognition that, okay, if there are declining numbers of CPAs, um, we're going to have to create leadership opportunities for folks that have decided that's not the path they want to take. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. Now, yeah, you know, for one thing, they talk about it. The big four has, has been doing a lot of this. They've been doing, and for a while, I think the numbers, they talk about something like as much as 20 or 25% of their hiring in several recent years has been non-accounts. Now, some of that's because they're exploring areas that don't require accounting as they move more into ESG. You're looking for engineers and stuff like that. So that's part of it. But part of it also is this just general, there are not as many CPAs as we need. And so you're seeing now more and more firms below that level uh, saying, okay, what tasks absolutely require a CPA and what tasks can be done by someone else? There's a huge amount of work done in accounting firms uh, that doesn't require a CPA. In fact, if you look at the average accounting firm, the average accounting firm does almost no work that requires, you know, sort of legally speaking, uh, a CPA. The skill set's a different, th a different issue, but you could teach some of those skills to people who aren't CPAs. There's plenty of very smart people who got, you know, history and psychology and, and, and English degrees, uh, who are very smart people who could learn a lot of the things that, that uh, uh, accountants can do. And firms are going to need to bring in more of those. And I think you saw a little bit of the, the sort of the, 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 um, the crack in that was as they started to look at people like marketers and HR staff and realize they need to professionalize those functions within a firm. And they found some of those people rising up to leadership levels, right? They might make them partner uh, and that sort of thing. And that sort of opened some people's eyes to saying, hey, you know, some of our leadership, not all of our leadership needs to be CPAs. Not all the skills we need will come from CPAs, uh, but we're going to need to see a lot more of it. Um, and I think one of the things we're going to need to see firms do is look at the tasks that they've traditionally given to a certain level of, of person, whether it's a manager or a senior or a partner and say, okay, how much of that is actually requires licensure? Uh, 
uh, and how much of it can just be done by a very smart person and where else can we find smart people? You can find smart people everywhere and then train them. So I think we're we're not seeing as much as we will. I think we'll see a lot more. I don't think it's as far along, say, for instance, as the automation uh, solution, right, to to the problem. That's that's been we've been working on that since the nineties. But the bringing in non CPAs, I think, is uh, uh, is going to is going to increase more and more as we go forward. Right, absolutely. And I guess another response to not being able to find enough talent is is uh, outsourcing or offshoring. Um, that seems to be gaining momentum among firms well below the big four and the yep. G400. Um, are outsourcing and offshoring trends that we can expect to see more of even among small firms? Absolutely. And a lot of that's com- comfort level, right? As you, as you get more and more firms saying, hey, yeah, we worked with somebody in the Philippines or somebody in India or somebody in, I mean, more and more countries are popping up that that, that offer those kinds of uh, services. As more and more firms take advantage of them and say, yep, it was secure and here's how you do it. Make sure it's safe. Make sure the information is safe. Make sure they're reliable. You're going to see more and more of it as, uh, and it's going to move down to smaller and smaller firms who will be able to say, oh, hey, I know a firm that did this and it worked for them. Or I saw, you know, I, I saw a firm presenting on this at a conference. I saw a couple of presentations at, at a recent conference on how to manage, you know, an offshore uh, workforce. And, and, and you can see everybody in the room scribbling notes saying, oh, yeah, yeah, this is an idea. And a lot of that goes to seeing a CPA firm. In this case, it was actually a panel of three different CPA firms that were working uh, offshoring. And they, you know, they said, well, three CPA firms, and these were pretty big firms, if they're all doing it, then it's good for me. I can trust it. I can rely on it. Because that's a big issue, obviously, and in anything accountants do. They're concerned about uh, safety, security, reliability, quality of work, and so on. So when you're working with somebody, particularly somebody at that much of an arm's length, right? If you're talking about somebody in the Philippines or in India, it's uh, they're half a world away and and they're working when you're not it's an entirely distance relationship uh, you want to be comfortable with that so i think we're going to see more and more firms get more and more comfortable with that uh and as they do you'll see it get picked up a lot because there's uh, um, a lot of people out there who can again can bring the skills that accounting firms need uh it's just a matter of finding a way to unlock them because right now like i said they're in india or the philippines and it's night when it's night for them when it's day for us etc cetera, etc cetera. so Right, exactly. Uh, I did hear from uh, one firm here in New Jersey that has uh, outsourced some of its work that one of the challenges that they were seeing, and this was this was probably about six months ago, was that, of course, there are uh, firms or companies in, let's say, India that are providing these services and competition for talent was getting as heated in <laughs> India as it was in the United yeah. States because people were realizing, oh, wow, we're providing this valuable service. Yep. They really need us. And people were starting to bounce around. It was almost like a, a great resignation in yes. India <laughs> as, as there was here in the United States. And I'm like, yeah. man, you, can't, you just can't win. No, <laughs> everywhere you go. We're just going to we'll be soon we'll be offshoring to like the moon because that's the only place right. where there's any talent left but they i mean it's funny because they did they had they I, i'm not surprised to hear that say the same problem with call centers uh, uh, several years back right that was the first great thing that everyone went to india for was call centers um and they had a similar problem after about a decade you know huge success lots of people signed up and suddenly you know just because you could speak english and talk on the phone uh you could command a huge salary and try you know Pick, make your your choice of employees. Yeah, I'm not surprised to hear that it's picking up uh, a similar thing for for accounting talent because uh, in the end, there's just there's just not that many people who have the skills and the interests and the mindset needed to do a lot of this work. Um, right. You know, it's not all of them are in, in accounting programs. Not all of them have CPAs, but uh, there's still a finite number of them. And the the demand for accounting work is only going to grow, right? And it's going to and it's it's always going to outpace. The number of people available to do it, which is a great position to be in, right? You don't want to be in a position right. where there's too many people chasing that work. Um, but on the other hand, you want to, like I said, keep your head above water and make sure you're able to to uh, complete the engagements you sign up for. Right. And I, I guess that 24-7 access is, is incredibly valuable to firms because one of the things I heard, and I guess this is one of the downsides of technology, is that during the pandemic, out of necessity, um, clients were reaching out to their CPAs uh, at all hours, you know, on weekends and so forth, because they could and they needed to because things were going on. Maybe it was related to PPP or something else. Yep. But that hasn't that hasn't pulled back. Right. They're continuing to do that. So now our members are complaining. They're getting calls from clients at 10, 11 <laughs> o'clock at night. They're getting calls when they're at their kid's soccer game on a Saturday. So that I guess that's the downside of technology is we have yep. so many ways to keep in touch that, that clients feel like uh, they can do it anytime. But that's part of the, the negative perception. Of of accounting is that you're always on, right? 
Yeah, absolutely. And yes, I mean, it's that's the kind of thing. Once you get used to that level of customer service, you don't want to go back, right? Oh, I got used to having my, my account answer. What's funny though, I, you know, it's funny you talk about, you know, the classic example, right? Even when they're at their kids, their kids' soccer games. I don't know why it's always a soccer game, but it's almost always a soccer game yeah. uh, is the example. But for a long time, that was the example. Like, yeah, you'll be able to, you know, this technology will allow you to answer your clients' questions even when you're on, you know, at your kind your kids' soccer games. Uh, and that was sort of a boast. And now that it's becoming an expectation, it's not as <laughs> it's not as much fun because right. it wasn't all the soccer games. And now it is all the soccer games, as you say. Now it's 24-7, you're expected to be on. Um, and I think, you know, the right, the, the, the way to spin that, right, again, we're going back to let's draw in more talent. Let's not tell them that you're on call 24-7. Right. Let's instead say <laughs> that you're incredibly important, right? People yeah, rely right. on you enormously. You have a huge impact on people's lives. Nowhere else, or not nowhere else, but very few other uh, jobs are going to make you so important that people need to talk to you all the time. Because you're you're that valuable to them, and you they make that much of a difference to their lives and their business and their families and their workers, uh, you know that's that's the way to spin it, right? right Don't mention yeah. that you're you're on call twenty four seven. Just mention yeah. that uh, you're again. It's that that most trusted advisor. That sounds a lot nicer than you're on call twenty four seven. Right. You know that that is great spin. It's also true, but it's also it's, yeah, yeah. it's great spin as well. Yeah. <laughs> um. So, you know, there's there's a lot of agreement amongst professionals and educators that accounting offers great career prospects, but as we discussed a little bit earlier, attracting and retaining new talent is still a challenge. Um, accounting Today has covered this issue in some depth. Uh, what have you learned in your writing about how to get students interested in accounting? Uh, you know, it's one of the things that keeps up, uh, keeps appearing constantly when you talk to accountants, like, how did you get in the field? How did you get into, why did you become a CPA? And so often it's my father was a CPA. My mother was a CPA. My uncle was a CPA. The guy who lived next door was a CPA. It is very much that sort of personal connection. Um, and and that's, you know, unfortunately, it's very difficult to, you know, you can't make more people in more neighborhoods or make, maybe if accountants had more children, maybe that would be a way to <laughs> solve it. But it really is, is that personal connection. Um, I, you know, and I know a lot of state societies do, do great programs of getting accountants into high schools, uh, that's a great start. I think, you know, just, you've got to expose people to accounting as early as you possibly can. That seems to be the, the, the only really reliable solution is to get people exposed to it. And particularly when you talk about, um, uh, DEI trying to bring in more diverse or underrepresented, uh, you know, pop parts of the population. That's enormously important. Uh, I've talked to Kimberly Ellison Taylor about this. She talks about, you know, in the black community, uh, they, they naturally look up to the doctors and the lawyers and you see doctors and lawyers in the black community. And so that's an aspirational figure. And that's someone, you know, a, a black kid can look up and say, yeah, of course I could be that doctor. I could be that lawyer because they see them in their communities, but you don't see as many because there just aren't, uh, as many black CPAs or black accountants. And so it's not a, a, a person they can imagine. It's not a, a person they can imagine themselves being and so it all comes back to that it seems to all come back to uh that that exposure at a young age uh, at an impressionable age to uh the respectability you know of of being an accountant the, the the positioning of accounting as as an authority figure who's respected listened to trusted um and then you know making sure that as they get older and are better able to understand what accountants do and the role they play uh making it clear you know the how great a role it is how exciting it is and how much uh how much you're able to help people how much you're able to uh to make a difference and it's going to be i think that's going to be a great one of the great things about the esg opportunity going on for accounting is that it's going to be able to make it easier to tell that story much earlier to say listen we're actually helping measure all the things that are going to help with the issues you care about, uh, you know, as so many young people care about the, the environment, and climate, and those kind of changes. So it's it's really finding ways to reach out to those younger people. I think that uh, early exposure is just enormous, and how you how you maintain that, I, you know, that's very difficult. Like I said, getting out to schools is a great start. Yeah, and I think you used the phrase "making a difference." I think that's really what CPAs need to communicate. Um, I did a presentation at a college here in New Jersey uh, with a member, and he was talking about helping out a small firm during the pandemic. And he started to get choked up yeah. because he knew what his firm had done for that client really made a difference. And I think that's where CPAs sort of fall down, as we were saying earlier, a little bit is, is they don't talk enough about, I guess they're just not braggers. They don't like talking about like all their successes. And I was encouraged in talking <laughs> about um, how you make a difference. You have a great story. You need to tell it. Yeah. And, and then I think that will bring in so many more people because they'd be like, wait, I can make a difference in my community. I can make a difference for this business or this individual. I think that's a little bit of what's missing. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah. Fewer war stories and more success stories is yeah, absolutely. A uh, great point. Um, the, uh, the the capacity for accountants to really make change uh, is only growing. And I think that's a, that's going to be something as uh, they incorporate it into that story. It's going to help them a lot. 
Yeah, uh, and I'm I'm going to steal what you just said: fewer war stories and more success stories. So just so you know, when you see it <laughs> it's all yours. on our website, I, I'm, uh, I'm stealing it. I give you the New Jersey rights to it. It's all yours. All right, great. I appreciate that, Dan. All right. <laughs> uh, well, Dan, I, we we could talk about this for uh, so much longer, but um, we'll have to leave it there. I really appreciate uh, your time. Thank you so much for taking the time to be with us today. Thank you for having me. It was a great conversation. Thank you all for listening and watching. Be sure to check out all the content and resources available from Accounting Today at accountingtoday.com. And for more guidance on staff recruitment and retention, visit njcpa.org slash hub slash staffing.